Welcome to the Monday Mindset. I am Tracy Rader. I am the Director of Implementation here at Giant, and I'm here with Kevin DeShazo once again. Hello, Kevin. Good morning, Tracy. How are you? I'm great. How was your weekend? Uh, it was it was uh, it was a good weekend. We we finished up uh, football season for our youngest son. Um, went to Bedlam OU versus OSU. Uh, as an OSU grad, that was tough, but we do a lot of work with OU, so it worked out. That's it's a mm -hmm. it's a good thing to be able to just go to the game and have have fun and enjoy it. Yesterday was restful, uh, and now we enter into uh, Thanksgiving week. So it was it was a good weekend. How about you? Great. Well, first of all, I mean, I had a great weekend too, but I've got to know, did you do the head to head to toe gear when you went to the, to the game? Yeah. I mean, I did face paint, full body suit, uh, <laughs> painted my hair. Uh, no, but I did see people that were, that were uh, dressed like that. And part of me is like, man, I'm jealous of those people. Like they've just got this level of freedom. Right. So they're like, that's all right. I'm just going to go for it. Uh, so no, I, I was dressed uh, pretty, pretty normal. Okay. I figure your buddies from college probably had some words for you, but that's okay. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's cool. No, I had a great weekend. Let's see. My husband and I went uh, hiking one day. Uh, for those of you watching that aren't from Oklahoma, because Kevin and I both are, we don't really have the mountains here. Um, not officially, but there are the Wichita mountains, we call them, and it's in Southern Oklahoma. So uh, my husband and I drove down there and hiked for a bit. It was nice, refreshing. No one was out there. I mean, I think we saw one person. So. Yep. Uh, anyway, we had, uh, yeah, other fun things this weekend. Um, gosh, my memory's really bad, Kevin, but I know it was a great one. <laughs> uh, to those, but but the, and, uh, and just the value of getting out and, and exercise, right? We've gone, we've taken the boys down to the Wichita Mountains two or three times, kind of in the midst of the pandemic. And it's just a great way to get away. And again, our, our tallest mountain in Oklahoma is a hill. Uh, so it's, it's not like you're out in the Rockies, you know, like really, really doing some serious mountaineering. Uh, but it's it is a beautiful spot. It is, and it's fresh air. So that's what we needed. So that was great. Amen. Um, okay. Well, it's another new week, and it's probably for most people, uh, those of you watching, is probably a short week for you. I hope so. It depends what industry you work in. I know for some of you, there's no break. For those of you who are in the medical industry and things, we sure appreciate you. Um, not you know, you don't always get to take off. So thank you for that. Um, but for the others of you, you probably get, uh, hopefully you get a couple days and it may not look the same as it has in years past, but I hope that you can still enjoy it. So Kevin, get us geared up for our mindsets just this week, every week you do such a great job. So what are we, what are we going to focus on today? Yeah. So I've been thinking lately and, and a lot of this just stems from conversations that I have with people and a lot of what we talk about, I mean, it's just real life stuff, right? We're just talking about things that we're dealing with, that, that people that we work with are dealing with families, clients. Uh, and, and so it feels like a conversation I've been having a lot are people just feel stuck. Uh, they feel like they're in a rut and, and it's easy to say, well, that's just 2020 um, because it's, 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 we're just in difficult spots, right? And people feel like it's almost groundhog day. They just wake up and are doing the same thing and they just don't feel like they're making any progress. They don't feel like they're making any headway uh, and it's, they just get stuck and they get negative and they get anxious and they get frustrated. Uh, and, and I see it. I mean, I, I get it, right. We, we've all, we've all been there, but there is a way out, right? You don't have to, to be unstuck or you don't have to be stuck in those spots. You don't have to be in that rut. That doesn't, you don't have to accept that. It's probably a better way to say it, right? You don't have to accept that you are where you are in terms of mindset, uh, because it is something you can change. Maybe you are where you are in your job. Maybe you are where you are in certain things in life. Um, but your mindset is not something that you just have to accept. It's something you can control. It's something that you can own. So as I've been kind of processing this and trying to figure out like what, what are practical ways? Cause it's easy to say, Hey, just have a better attitude, you know, just, just think better. Uh, but that's not helpful, right? That actually is a burden on people to say things like that. And so I've been trying to, to process, like, how do you get unstuck? How do you really get out of a rut? So a couple of things that I've, I've kind of been processing and thinking through, I think there are kind of three, three ways, three things you can do. Maybe it's a combination of these three to get unstuck, to get out of this mental rut uh, that you're in. First thing I think is gratitude, right? We're, we're in this weekend, this week of Thanksgiving. And, and, and I know it's really cliche to say, but like Thanksgiving really should be a, a, a mindset and a lifestyle, right? It's not just a one day thing. It's not a once a year thing. It's, it should be a daily consistent practice. Uh, and I always make fun of kind of this time of year because on Thursday, everyone on social media and in life is like, I'm just so grateful. I have more than I can ever need. I've got everything I want. 
I mean, life, it, it's good enough. You know, I have everything. And then Friday, Black Friday hits and we go stand in line for all these things like, I need more, I need more, I need more. It's like, but if we could just practice gratitude, uh, because even in the midst of a difficult season, and I, and I know this has been a difficult season for many, and it, and it will be for, for quite a while, but even in the midst of difficult seasons, even in the midst of hardships, even in the midst of frustrations, in the midst of struggle, there are things to be grateful for. And, and if we focus on those, we end up with a better mindset, right? You can't be grateful and stressed out at the same time. You can't be positive and negative at the same time. And so it's, it's focusing on what we focus on. Right. So, so making a list, a gratitude list, I've said before, I start every day with the, the, an app called day one, and I just list out 10 things that I'm grateful for. And I do that every day. I've made that a, a habit of mine uh, over the past couple of months, and it changes the way I operate. It changes the way that I think in the midst of stress, I'm choosing gratitude. You have, a, you have an option of what you choose. And so making a list, and again, you can get as basic and as simple as you want, because you can, I know a lot of people right now like, I mean, really, I mean, what I, I've lost my job, I've lost this, it's a pandemic in 2020, really gratitude. What, what am I supposed to be grateful for in this year? You're breathing, you have clothes to wear, you have a family, hopefully you have a job, you have income, you have a bed to sleep in, a house to live in, food to eat. I mean, legitimately get, a, get as small as you want to get with it and then just let that list grow. And I promise you, you will be different at the end. I would say take 10 minutes. Right. And my daily email that I send out to leaders, this is actually what I talked about today, is taking 10 minutes to work on that thing that you believe will make you better. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your mindset. Maybe it's connecting with your team. Maybe it's your family. But if you practice gratitude for 10 minutes a day, that's it. Right. Because it can seem overwhelming. Right. It's like, hey, I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to go to the gym every day for an hour. No, you're not. And that hour we know is going to take a lot longer than an hour because you got to get ready. You got to go to the gym. You got to work out. You got to take a shower, get dressed. It's an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And that can be a burden, even if you break that down to twice a week or three times a week. So start small. Do something for 10 minutes a day. If you practiced gratitude for 10 minutes a day and actually did it every day, and I promise you have 10 minutes in your day. If you actually did it for the whole year, you would have spent over 60 hours of your year practicing gratitude, working on your mindset. It's like, if you don't think that's going to make a difference in your life, I mean, we need to have a conversation, right? What would, what would change in your life if you spent 60 hours a year focused on gratitude, focused on your mindset? I think you would see significant change. Uh, again, I mentioned in my email, I, I run and I just do it a couple times a week. Usually on Saturday and Sunday mornings, I run three to five miles. So this year I'm going to run somewhere around 300, 365 miles. And it's going to be about 42 to 45 hours is what I'm going to spend on that. So way under 60 hours of running, of exercise, and I cannot tell you the benefits that that's having on my life, on my mindset, on my health, on my relationships. It just puts me in a much better place. So commit to 10 minutes a day of gratitude and you will get unstuck. I think another thing to try or to do is to focus on others. I think when we get in this rut, a lot of it is the result of just focusing on ourselves. We're looking at everything we don't have, everything that's not going our way, everything that's not working out, everything that's difficult. It's like, man, there, there's a whole world out there of people who you can serve, who you can love, who you can invest in, who you can develop. And when you do that, when you turn your attention to actually serving others, you start to forget about a lot of your problems. Right? You realize like you've got, even in the midst of struggle, you've got, you've got the capacity to serve other people. And that changes your mindset, right? You can't be in a bad mood. Choose to go, you know, take some cookies to your neighbors, right? Let's get as cheesy as we can. Take some cookies to your neighbors. You're going to feel awesome. And it's not, it's not a selfish thing, right? Like you're serving them. You want to love on them. But it's like you're going to feel better for doing that. So lift up your eyes and take your, take your focus off of you and focus on what can, what can be done, right? There are needs that you can meet. No matter what situation you're in, you can help meet a need for someone. You can help serve someone. That's an easy, easy way to not just get out of a rut, but to make others better as well, right? When you focus on others, this, this burden kind of gets lifted off of you, right? And your problems kind of start to fall to the side. The last thing I think about is just do something, right? Take action. I think a lot of times we feel stuck in a rut, and especially as we're pursuing a vision. Again, maybe it's becoming a better leader. Maybe it's getting healthier. Maybe it's starting a business. Maybe it's writing a book or launching a side project. And you feel like you're just going through the motions and nothing's really happening. Uh, I think, A, that's probably a lie, right? Things are happening, but just maybe not the thing that we want 
to happen. We focus on everything that's not working, but we get in this rut and then we just stop. Uh, it's not going to work anyway. I'm just tired. It's just, it's just not working out. I think, no, do, do one thing, get one small win today, right? What's the next natural step you can take in this vision? It doesn't have to be big, right? What's a, what's a small thing you can do today? Maybe it's send an email. Maybe it's write a page of that book, right? But what's one thing you can do to move just a little bit forward? Cause, cause baby steps are still steps, right? We always want to judge the pace of our progress. It's like, no progress is, is messy. Right. And it's, it's not, you don't, you don't climb a mountain in one step. You don't run a marathon in one step. It's a bunch of little steps. And so what's one small thing that you can do today and then celebrate that because we do, what we don't tend to do very well is celebrate our progress. So I think when we get in a rut, um, we're looking at things that haven't been accomplished instead of looking at what has been accomplished. Right. So look, looking back and saying, man, I've actually come farther than I, I thought I have. I, I'm not at the finish line yet, but I'm way far away from the starting line. And that kind of gives you that energy to just do one more thing. Just take one extra action today. Uh, and as I'm saying this, I know I said three things, but I'm a connector. So I think on the, on the spot, I have a fourth thing. And I think this can actually be really powerful. I think in this season of, of being of feeling stuck, of feeling like you're in a rut, maybe you're not. Maybe that's a lie, right? Maybe this is just part of the process, right? Maybe you're just in this season of the process where this is what the work looks like. You're not in a rut, you're, you're just in it, right? You're in the work, you're doing the work. But, but we, we tend to believe with our fears and our insecurities and our pressures and our comparisons that we're stuck, that we're not doing as well as somebody else. It's like, maybe you're not stuck. Maybe you're exactly where you're supposed to be on the path that you're supposed to be on. And if you could, if you could have better perspective, you could see, oh, wait, no, this is where I, this is where I should be. All right, so, so last week, for example, there's a guy uh, I watched in our parking lot. I think the story relates. It may not relate at all. Um, it was this, this, this delivery truck and it just kept smashing into uh, our parking garage, parking lot. I don't know what you call it. The covering for the parking lot and just kept smashing it and smashing it and smashing it and smashing it. He didn't have the right perspective. Right? Eventually he had, to, he had to back up and realize like, oh, this is the way forward right here. And so our perspective in the midst of a rut may, may reveal the fact that we're actually not in a rut. If we could back up and, and to get a bigger view of our situation, we could see where we actually are in relation to where we should be in, to, in relation to where we're going and say, I'm not stuck. This is just part of the process. So don't believe the lie that you're stuck or that you're in this rut because then you want to quit because it's a difficult moment. And usually that's what happens, right? The enemy comes in and tries to like distract us and defeat us and get us to where we, we decommit from our goal, from our vision. And so we end up partnering with the enemy and however you want to define the enemy, right? Resistance, um, but this, this, this thing, we've all felt it. It gets very real as you're pursuing a vision, as you're trying to get better, this, something happens to try to take you off track. And we end up partnering with that to in fact, take ourselves off track, but to say, no, 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 I'm not going to believe that lie. I'm not in a rut. I'm right where I should be. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep taking the next step. I'm going to keep doing the work. I'm going to keep showing up because that's what, it, that's what it takes to get better. And so sometimes we're just in difficult seasons and it, and it requires us to show up and, and do the hard work. Uh, and it's not always fun. It's not always a sexy work. It's not, you're not gonna always love what you're doing. You know, I hate that phrase that if you love what you'll do, you'll never work a day in your life. It's like, that's such a burden on people <laughs> because the work is work. And some days you're gonna love it, but some days you're not. And that doesn't mean you're stuck. It's just, a, it's just another day. So to have better perspective and realize I'm just, this is just part of the process. I've just got to keep going. So those are kind of my, my four thoughts, right? Practice gratitude, serve other people, uh, take the next step and then get a better perspective. Tracy, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Mm, that's really good. Those are really practical things. I was taking notes over here. You said a little phrase that I really love. I'm going to really think about that, especially during the Thanksgiving season and then on into Christmas and all as we're celebrating. You said, lift up your eyes, um, take your eyes off of yourself and then lift them up up or onto someone else. And so I'm thinking, you know, you, you may have it bad. I may have it bad, whatever, whatever's going on in your life. And depression is real and, and all of that for sure. But when you're maybe not surrounded by as many people as we are normally going to be surrounded by during the holidays, but you'll probably be with some family and you don't know what's going on in their lives. And they may be very cast down at this point. And so I would say to lift our eyes and look around the room and see who needs 
who needs some encouragement, who needs a change in their mindset. And instead of focusing on our own, yeah, look around and lift your eyes and see who may be in need and who, who you can really, I guess, just help <laughs> during yeah. the holidays. They just That's may right. need you, right? That's right. And, and I think when we, here's what, what happens when, when we feel like we're in a rut. Because again, I think a lot of the times it really is just a feeling, right? It's, it's not real. It's just this feeling that we have. And it's, it's almost a selfish thing. It's like complaining, right? It's, it's this result of just focusing too much on us. And it's like, we're not just made here. We're not here for us. Um, we're, we're part of the equation. It's like when we're sitting here focused on us the whole time and, and our difficulties and our frustrations, like, hey, we're, we're, it's just nobody wants to be around us. Like, let's just be honest. Like it, you, you become a whiner and a complainer. And, and I've been there, right? So this is not, not from a place of judgment. It's like we, we've all been there, but those aren't people that we want to be around. Those aren't difference makers. And so for you to lift your eyes up and say, wait a minute, like maybe I've got it difficult, right? So it's not about ignoring your issues, but it's like, maybe I do have it difficult, but I can still impact other people. And, and if your your eyes are only on you, you're missing out on opportunity, right? Because like you can be a catalyst in the life of somebody else. You can be significant for them to, to change their perspective, to change their mindset. But if you're walking in only focused on you, that's never going to happen. Um, and, and that multiplies, right? Because what I think what can happen is this chain of events where you come in, even in the midst of your frustration, even in the midst of the struggle, right? Because again, I'm not saying ignore those things. I'm saying with better perspective, you choose how you show up. And so you're having these conversations with your family, your friends, whatever it may be, and, and, and you serve as kind of a catalyst for them to see things in a different way. And like, and how is this possible? Because I know you're having a tough season too. You're like, you're right, I am. And, and, and I'm, I'm aware of it, but I'm just choosing, choosing to show up in a different way. So I didn't, I didn't want to come in here negative. I didn't want to come in here complaining. I didn't want, to, I didn't want my mindset to be not just a burden on me, but to be a burden on you as well. And so when you come in to be, you know, I, I love this phrase, Jeremy, we've talked about this a lot with parenting. Um, he always wanted his kids to be a blessing to people, not a burden on people. So like if you're at a restaurant, for, ex for example, like to not have your kids running around screaming and you you become a burden on people around you who are just trying to have a dinner, but for your kids to be behaved and, and to, to act responsibly, um, to where to the point where you know waiters other people like mean your kids are amazing like we just kind of watched and your kids were like this is incredible we just wanted to honor you guys and, and let you know that we saw that it, it's the same thing for us in our lives we can be a blessing to people or we can be a burden to people and if we're only focused on us and our problems we're, we're never going to be able to serve other people in the way that we should but when we do that can be a catalyst to them like yeah if they can own it i can own it and then they go do that for somebody else, right? And so that 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 good word, that that positive mindset, starts to spread throughout their life as well. That's great. I also like just that perspective of the ten minutes a day, sixty mm -hmm. hours a year. You said, um, "Gosh, I think about how much I spend time on Netflix or Amazon mm -hmm. Prime, and and if I could just transfer a, just a little bit of that time, I waste." into something productive it's just a good motivation to to change it yeah. and and i think too what will happen what you'll find is that you can build on that right that 10 minutes is just a basic foundation but i think what you'll find is that the more you you do it you, and you see the benefit of it you want to do that more so don't hear me saying people listening like you're going to spend five hours a day <laughs> like on gratitude or on your mindset like that's not the point but what if that 10 minutes ends up stretching to 20 minutes or if it stretches to 30 minutes Again, we, we have, I, I will do an audit on your day. Watch where you spend your time. I will guarantee you, we are, we are the busiest we've ever been in society, I, I believe, and we are the least productive we've ever been. Um, we're just really, really busy and really distracted, but we're not as focused as we should be on work, on people, on the things that, that matter. Um, so I will guarantee you that you have 10 minutes in your day, but that could easily lead to 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Well, then then what happens in your life, right? So weird story, it's a family show, but uh, I've been I've been studying the benefits of cold showers. Oh, wow, okay, tell me more. <laughs> connectors are weird, <laughs> connectors are weird, so I apologize, it's like this is my brain, I just, I'm weird. So just take that with, with what it is. So, but I've been studying the benefits and it's it's your your mental health, um, it develops grit, it develops resilience, it develops optimism. It actually helps you overcome obstacles because your body, like your cells are like training themselves to deal with uncomfortable situations. Um, there, are, there are other just general health benefits like fighting off sickness and all sorts of things, alertness, performance, um, muscle recovery. So I've been studying this stuff 
And, and I know a guy who does an ice bath like regularly. I'm like, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that bold, right? Like I'm not, I'm not that into it. Uh, but I was reading about, it, I said, if, if you could just take, uh, and, I, and when I first started reading, I was like a cold shower. No, <laughs> like I'm not taking a cold shower, but I started reading and said, you know, at the end of your regular shower, just flip it to cold for 30 seconds. Okay. And then you can build to a minute, then you can build to a couple minutes. And, and so I've been doing this for about a month and, and I, and I have noticed a difference. Like I'm alertness. Isn't generally an issue for me. Like I usually have, have energy and pretty excited about the day, but I have noticed an, an alertness. I have noticed a, a mental difference. I have noticed muscle recovery, like after runs, but I started at that, at that 30 seconds and I'm, I'm probably up to two to three minutes at this point. Uh, and it's, and it's not as difficult as it was right early on. I'm like, this is the worst thing I've ever done. Why did I do this? I regret it. But now I'm like, no, I can handle this. Right. So you realize that you're tougher than you think you are, um, which is great when you feel like you're in a rut. You're like, no, I've got this right. Because I've overcome everything I've ever faced. Whatever this season is, I'm going to overcome that as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of a weird thing, but you just start to build on a foundation of habits of gratitude of mindset. And the more you do it, you see the benefit. So that's the challenge today. Like, I will promise you, if you do 10 minutes a day, you'll see a difference in your life. You, you, you just will. Like 10 minutes a day, you will see a difference in your life. I believe it. Not a cold shower, 10 minutes of yeah. gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a really hard but good question coming in. So um, okay. Caroline says, I've lost my job during COVID. My mindset is mush. <laughs> How do I spend time with family this week during Thanksgiving and not be negative, but still share my struggles? It's a great question. Yeah. Number one, Caroline, just sorry. Um, I mean, it, it, it sucks. Like it's, it's not fun. Um, you're obviously not alone in that it's this, this season has impacted millions, um, but that doesn't make it any easier knowing like that you're part of those millions, right? It's just, it's tough. Um, so I'm sorry you're going through that. Sorry you're having to deal with that. Um, if we can ever be a resource, I mean, shoot us a message. We truthfully will be, we'll be happy to talk. We're not, not saying we're going to have answers, but be, be a listening ear. Um, I, I think in the midst of that, you still you get to spend time with family, right? And and that's a win. So so being you still have things to be grateful for. So this struggle is real, right? This difficulty is real. Um, so don't hear me saying ignore that at all because that's not healthy. It, it's a real thing. But there's still a lot to be grateful for. Time with your family. I hope that you're healthy. Um, and so that finding the things to be grateful for will allow you to walk in that room with a better mindset. Don't feel shame. All right? Don't feel shame walking into that room. You didn't do anything to deserve getting getting let go. The millions in this in this economy who have been let go, I mean, they, they didn't do anything wrong. So don't feel shame with that, right? That's not your identity. It's it's just something that's happened. It will be, it will be a part of your story that you will overcome. But walk in the room with confidence. Walk in the room with gratitude. Um, and I will say it's okay to share those struggles. I would say it's finding the right time, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to walk in it's like, hey, everyone, happy Thanksgiving. By the way, I lost my job, but I'm really sad. You know. You don't want to walk in, uh, have some discretion and discipline for when you share it, but but that doesn't mean keep it in, right? Because it's not healthy for you to keep it in. So find that trusted family member, find that time where it makes sense to where you can open up to that person. Say, hey, I know this this Thanksgiving, I'm so glad like we're here with family and I love you guys. I'm grateful to be here, but I am struggling. Like it, it's been a really tough season. It's it's a hundred percent okay to to say that, to share that. Um, I would just say find the right moment, the right setting for that. And don't feel like you're being a burden on people. So when I said burden and blessing, that doesn't mean you don't share your struggles, right? So don't don't hear that at all because that's a lie. You you are not a burden by sharing your struggles with people. You're giving them an opportunity to help you and to serve mm -hmm. you. Like you don't have to fight the battle alone. So don't don't feel like you have to just put on a fake smile and walk in and, and pretend everything's okay because that's not real. But go in, have a mindset of gratitude, and then find that family member that you really trust uh, to, to, to open up to it and say, Hey, this is actually a really, really hard season. Um, I just need someone to know that, you know, and, and let them kind of speak into your life and serve you however they can, um, and, and accept, accept whatever the help they offer. Hmm, that's good. Well, and I'd say, I, I mean, don't use it as a networking opportunity, but you never know who's in that room and who may know someone, I don't know what industry Caroline's in, but maybe they know somebody or you can put a word out just, Hey, my niece or whatever is looking for a job. So, but yeah, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with just sharing that that's been a tough part of her year. And so yeah. it's good. Well, as usual, Kevin, thank you. This is really helpful. Very practical things. I've written down your three. What was your fourth 
Tell me again your fourth. <laughs> you came up with the last. Uh, I think perspective, realizing that it may not act, you may not, you may not be in a rut, right? This may just be part of the process for whatever you're running toward. Absolutely. Yeah, I love those. Great ideas there. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, those of you on the Giant platform, thanks for coming. And again, we always try and mention that if you are not yet on the Giant platform, uh, that's free. You can go to what we call a send. If you go to giant.tv slash free account, you can have a free account. And I tell you what, if you are feeling in a rut and you want some kind of help pulling you out, man, some of our uh, series and episodes that we have on there on uh, just self-awareness and leadership. And there's a great one, uh, Managing Stress. It's a 16 episode um, all about managing stress, depending on what personality you have. So it looks different depending on your personality. So lots of great resources for absolutely free. Again, giant.tv slash free account. So we invite you to do that. And Kevin, thank you again. Thank you guys. Appreciate you showing up. Have a great holiday and we'll see you all next Monday.